you can choose a life of ease and comfort, or you can choose a life of service and adventure. Which one of those, when you're 90 years old, are you going to be more proud of? (laughs) (laughs) That's really good. A guy like you. No matter how good we are, we can still be better. You can always be better. Customers have a divine discontent, and they teach you if you listen to customers. So we watch for that, and we see patterns, and we can find places where it's not working, something's going wrong, and that's really how I get the feedback, is from customer input. Uh, And often, you know, in all caps, angry, you ruined my child's birthday because the gift didn't show up on time. And we take that, and what you really want to do is you take that, it's an anecdote, it's a single example, but you need to find the root cause What went wrong deep inside the system? How did this happen? Because then you can fix it for everyone so that that particular problem will never happen again. You don't just fix the symptom. You have to fix the root cause. And that's been the secret to our operational success for 20 years. (laughs) (laughs) That's really good. A guy like you. There are a lot of things that are a waste of time. You know, when you think about your life, I think I I often tell people um, that I work with, if you can get... Because people, people have very high standards for how they want their work life to be. And, uh, and I said, look, if you can get your work life to be where you enjoy half of it, that is, a home, that is amazing. Because very few people ever achieve that. Because the truth is, everything comes with overhead. That's reality. Everything comes with pieces that you don't like. You could be a Supreme Court justice and there's still going to be pieces of your job you don't like. You can be a university professor and still going to be, you have to go to committee meetings and you have to do things. You know, there are, every job comes with pieces you don't like. And we need to say, that's just how, that's part of it. Uh, and, and, and not resent those pieces or try not to, uh, but also try to minimize them. I tell senior executives, you should have the least stress. You know, there's this weird, I think, false uh, idea that CEOs, I'm a CEO, there's this false idea that CEOs are under the most stress. Well, I look at that, I'm like, why? You're in charge. Why don't you delegate the stress? It's your choice. And... Uh, so it's, you have to figure out how to set up your life in such a way that you can minimize the things. And I find people don't dislike hard work. What people dislike is being um, out of control. Like, they can't control their life. They can't control their environment. This happens to me when I get overscheduled. I hate being overscheduled. I want some time to be able to think and free myself. We all have the same amount of time in the world. Nobody has more time than anybody else. And when you become a very successful person, one of the things, you start to get overscheduled. You have this event. You had to agree to do this. And maybe last night you were like, why didn't I agree to do this? I have to go on stage tomorrow. I wish I were really with my family. And, you know, or I hope maybe not this case. Let's say that you like this one. But in general, that kind of thing happens. And so you have to guard your time and, um, and, and try to stay a little bit flexible. So that's, for me, it's not a waste of time, but I like to have some freedom of movement uh, uh, rather than having every minute of every day scheduled. Poor <laughs> that's really good. A guy like you. So a young person starting their career, uh, I think... There are probably a lot of things. Some of them are very well known, and people have heard them many times. They're still true. One of those that you should always focus on, a young person should find something that they're passionate about to do. And um, that's not going to surprise anyone. It's it's a clear thing to do. It's very hard. If you don't love your work, you're never going to be great at it. Um, I think the other thing I would suggest to uh, any young person... Uh, even before they start their career, is to really think about their choices. Because I find young people, and I, I, when I was young, I, had, I made this mistake too. 
you can get very fixed on your gifts. So everybody has gifts. You know, you, you have gifts and you have things that you didn't get gifted. Maybe you're extremely beautiful. Maybe you're extremely good at mathematics. Maybe you, there are a lot of things that you can be given. But those things can confuse you because they're not the things that construct your life. It's your choices that construct your life, not your gifts. You can celebrate your gifts. Be proud of them. Be happy of them. Actually, don't be proud of them. Be, be celebratory of them. But you can't be proud because they're gifts. They were given to you. You didn't earn them. You can only be proud of the things you earn. And so as I got older, I started to realize I wasn't proud of my gifts. I was always good at school. School was always easy for me. And I was always proud that I was a great student. I got A's in all my classes. I was good at math, all of that. And I thought, I thought that's who I was. But it's not true. Those are the things that are gifts. What was hard for me is deciding to work hard, deciding to use my gifts in certain ways, to challenge myself to uh, do things that I didn't think I could do, to put myself in uncomfortable situations. We all get, I would say to a young person, you can choose a life of ease and comfort, or you can choose a life of service and adventure. Which one of those, when you're 90 years old, are you going to be more proud of? Poor <laughs> That's really good. A guy like you. We only have a few principles at Amazon, kind of core values that we go back to over and over again. And if you looked at each of the things that we do, you would see those run straight through everything. So the first one, and by far the most important one, is customer obsession. And we talk about it as customer obsession as opposed to competitor obsession. And I have seen over and over again companies talk about that they're customer focused, but really when I pay close attention to them, I believe they are competitor focused. And that's just a completely different mentality. By the way, competitor focus can work, um, but I don't think it works in the long run as well as customer focused. For one thing, once you're the leader, if your whole culture is competitor obsessed, kind of hard to stay energized and motivated if you're out in front. Um, whereas customers are always unsatisfied. They're always discontent. They always want more. And so no matter how far you get out there in front of your competitors, you're still behind your customers. So they're always pulling you along. So customer obsession is a deep principle that underlies everything we do. Poor <laughs> That's really good. A guy like you... And how do you, so the real question for me is how do you go about maintaining a day one culture? You know, it's great to have the, um, the scale of Amazon. We have financial resources. We have lots of brilliant people. We can accomplish great things. We have global scope. We have operations all over the world. But the downside of that is that you can lose your nimbleness. You can lose your entrepreneurial spirit. You can lose your, that kind of heart that the, the, that, um, that small companies often have. And so if you could have the best of both worlds, if you can have that entrepreneurial spirit and heart, while at the same time having all the advantages that come with scale and scope, think, think of the things that you could do. And, and so how, the question is, how do you achieve that? Um, the, the scale is good because it makes you robust. You know, a, a, a big boxer can take a punch to the head. The question is, you also want to dodge those punches. So you'd like to be nimble. You want to be big and nimble. And I find that there are a lot of things that are protective of the day one mentality. I already spent some time on one of them, which is customer obsession. I think that's the most important thing. If you can, and it gets harder as you get bigger. When you're a little tiny company, say you're a 10 person startup company, Every single person in the company is focused on the customer. When you get to be a bigger company, you've got all the middle, you've got middle managers and you've got all these layers and the, those people aren't on the front lines. They're not interacting with customers every day. They're insulated from customers and they start to manage not the customer uh, happiness directly, but they start to manage through proxies like metrics and processes and some of those things can become bureaucratic. So it's very challenging. But one of the things that happens is the decision-making velocity slows down. And I think the reason, one of the reasons that that happens is that people, 
all say junior executives inside the big company start to uh, model all decisions as if they are heavyweight, irreversible, highly consequential decisions. And so even two-way doors, you could make you make a decision, it's the wrong decision, you can just back up, back through the door and try again. Even those reversible decisions start to be made with heavyweight processes. And so you can teach people that these pitfalls and, and, and traps and then teach them to avoid those traps. And that's what we're trying to do at Amazon so that we can maintain our inventiveness and our heart and our kind of small company spirit even as we have the scale and scope of a larger company. Poor <laughs> that's really good. A guy like you. If the stock is up 10% this month, don't feel 10% smarter because when the stock is down 10% some month, you're going to have to feel 10% dumber and it's not going to feel as good. And so it's, you know, ownership is, uh, we give most of our compensation uh, is, is done in terms of uh, stock compensation. And, uh, uh, and part and parcel with ownership is a mentality of, of long-term thinking. You know, you, owners think longer term than renters do. So I have a friend who rented his house to some tenants, and instead of getting a Christmas tree stand at Christmas, they just nailed the Christmas tree into the hardwood floors of the house. No owner would ever do that. And um, but sometimes they're no, that's a bad tenant. You know, they're good good tenants, but that's a bad tenant, and, and it's because you know this is the same old thing about you know nobody ever washed a rental car, and um, it, it, you know, you take better care of the things that you own and. And, uh, uh, but, but one of the responsibilities of ownership and de definitely deep inside the Amazon culture is to think about the fundamentals of the business and not the daily fluctuations in the stock price. It's not, there's no information in it. Poor <laughs> That's really good. A guy like you. What are you really focusing on? So, um, you know, I'm focusing on those things that I think make Amazon unusual, uh, uh, genuine customer obsession. So like every single thing you just mentioned, when, you know, when our senior executives sit down and review those programs, they're looking for customer obsession. Where, how is it? Second one that we're focused on is invention. We don't like to do Me Too offerings. We want to take, we'll be inspired by something we see in the world. We're not hermetically sealed, but we want to, Put our own twist on it. We want to try to do something better for customers that's pioneering. So where is the invention? You know, uh, why is this going to be better for customers than the already whatever is serving that need in the world today? Um, and uh, uh, and then a willingness to think long term. So I'm very focused on those things, and 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 also the operational excellence, reducing defects at their root. Those are the things. That's the culture of Amazon. It's the habits that we have. Those are the things I'm focused on. And those are the things that all of our senior people are focused on. Mm -hmm.